All right. First item up is Black History Month. We have a proclamation, and we have some guests with us tonight. Um, is everybody going to come up at once? How are we going to do this? No, I, th I think it's just going to be Kim and I, but I will introduce our special guests. Okay. <laughs> and then we'll just switch chairs. <laughs> uh, confident. There we go. Uh, hello, uh, uh, City Council. My name is Greg Hemer. I am with the Milwaukee Historical Society, and thank you for having us here uh, this evening to celebrate Black History Month. I'm just going to quickly, uh, briefly run over a little bit of uh, what the Milwaukee Historical Society does. We started in 1936 uh, with the Pioneer uh, Children, and in 1975, we gained the beautiful building at 3737 Southeast Adam Street, open Saturdays, 1 to 5 p.m. Today, the Milwaukee Historical Society is now bringing out its younger genera generation. Our motto is preserving Milwaukee's history for future generations. We've changed the museum from a house museum into an interpretive, and we join in public events like history walks, plant sales, umbrella parade, and Christmas at the museum. Today, the Milwaukee Historical Society has over 100 members and corporate sponsors. We have over 800 followers on Facebook. We are now on Instagram and Twitter. Don't ask me what any of that is, because I don't know. And we also write the history article in the pilot. Today, the Milwaukee Historical Society works with the city of Milwaukee on city events like city proclamations, like the one we are having tonight. 2016, we gave a presentation during the Visioning Town Hall. We helped celebrate Dogwood Day and the Max Orange Line opening. 2018 was a very historic year for us. We worked a lot. Uh, we uh, opened uh, a new exhibit called Milwaukee History of the West Dogwood City. We brought in two, over 200 people on a Saturday morning into downtown Milwaukee with the AARP His History Walk. We hosted several events like Christmas at the Museum. And uh, we also started a building maintenance fund to help preserve our beautiful building. We started Paul Klein's history tour, which was actually visiting other museums. And we put together Lots Loop, which is an interpretive walk that you can use with your cell phone to walk around downtown, the trolley trail, and uh, uh, Island Station to help you interpret of what you see in art, history, and culture. And we also got our Rotary Peace Poll this year. <laughs> 2019 is even going to be better. Now, I know none of you uh, were there February 1st for our VIP event or on our opening day, but I hope that you, you guys will still be able to come. Milwaukee Kids Growing Up in the Good Old Days. It is a new exhibit that shows what life was like for children before the digital age. We as also started our historic sign and tour program, and hopefully we'll be having a historic home tour pro, uh, uh, this um, early summer uh, in Island Station. We're also starting an oral history program where we can join together uh, with the older generation and be able to record their stories. And we, of course, are looking forward to continuing our partnership with the city of Milwaukee. So I'd like to present two things uh, to the city uh, today. Uh, one is your letter of acceptance uh, to our society. Every year we guys give you a uh, MOU uh, saying that you guys can be members. We don't believe in charging the city like other organizations do to have you guys be members. We appreciate everything that you do for us. And in conjunction with our newest uh, exhibit, we have revamped our Milwaukee schools. We have given one to each seven of the libraries that uh, the, are mentioned in this uh, school to their school library. And we'd like to give one to the Milwaukee Library as well. So I will hand these off to uh, Miss Ober, and I will let her be the caretaker of them. Can you describe a little bit more what that book is? That Milwaukee School, so what it does is it talks about schools of the past, uh, schools that have closed, and schools that are open now okay. that are within the Milwaukee uh, city limits or, uh, with, uh, or that children would attend here in Milwaukee. And you guys wrote all that, or it's a prior publication? Uh, it is a prior or? publication that has been uh, revised okay. and re-edited. Nice. nice, great. Is it public and private schools? Uh, it does include public and private schools. Cool. Great. All right. And all the tech schools. Mm -hmm. Now it is, oh, 
And I want to recognize two uh, distinguished guests that are in our audience, and that is Hurtis and Dorothy uh, Hadley. Uh, most of you know them. They are our first uh, African-American uh, owners of a business uh, in Milwaukee, just right across the street here. Uh, it was uh, Milwaukee Pastry Kitchen, and uh, they are two of the most wonderful people, and they're going to be selling what, what year of your anniversary? 57. 57 years of wow. being together. Wow. They still act like they still act like little kids together too. <laughs> okay. Tell them about the broom. Uh, they are going to be uh, renewing their vows and jumping the broom uh, here in uh, early March again. So mm-hmm. Hurtis is very excited because he gets to pay for a whole new event. <laughs> 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 yeah, they're not jumping these days. So I'd like to introduce uh, Kimberly Morin from the Oregon Black Pioneers. Now, we got a chance to meet with the Oregon Black Pioneers really because of uh, uh, Hurtis and Dorothy and their ties here with Milwaukee. Uh, Kimberly has uh, been absolutely great. We've had a relationship now for about two and a half, three years. Uh, she has uh, brought to us uh, a lot of light on the African-American history that is here in Milwaukee. Uh, one of the great things is that uh, one of the people that I believe she's going to be talking about tonight. I was in uh, St. Louis in the new Arch uh, uh, Museum that they opened up, and lo and behold, there is a Milwaukee in in there. So uh, it is very exciting. We have learned a lot from the Oregon Black Pioneers, and I would be remiss if I did not talk about their 25th gala and fundraiser, which is Saturday, March 2nd from 6 to 11 p.m. at the World of Speed there in uh, Wilsonville. And uh, you can uh, buy tickets online on their uh, website. So I, Kim and I are going to switch places and I'll switch the name tags. And uh, so thank you guys very much. Thank you. Okay. Now, well, let's go. Okay. And it gives you a preview of Okay. Thank you so much. Good evening. It is such a pleasure to be here tonight. I'd like to thank um, Mayor Gamba and um, the members of the City Council for allowing me to be here tonight and staff. And um, I look forward to uh, working with you guys with to um, install the historical marker for the Hadley um, Milwaukee Pastry Kitchen. Um, it's been a pleasure working with Greg um, in the Milwaukee Histo- Historical Society. I, I really love um, unveiling the history that um, of African Americans in small towns and rural areas. Uh, we know a lot about Portland and Vanport, but there's a lot of rich history that um, is right here in our smaller communities. So. And with that, I'd like to um, move forward with um, my presentation tonight. I'm going to just give you a brief history on the history of uh, African Americans in Milwaukee and also um, talk a little bit about the Oregon Black Pioneers. Um, founded in 1993, our mission is to research, recognize, and observe the rich cultural heritage of African Americans in Oregon. It was founded by members, a small group in Salem, Oregon, who wanted to bring black history in Oregon um, to the general public. We, um, we fulfill our mission through several things. We have four major exhibits at the Oregon Historical Society, and we also partner with small heritage organizations, and we provide exhibits in the um, exposition spaces. And um, we have several uh, exhibits at the Oregon Capitol. We also document um, history of African Americans in Oregon. Uh, our first document our publication was uh, Perseverance, the History of African Americans in Marion and Polk County. Uh, and Gwen Carr was the lead author for that document. document. And I also authored Image of um, America, African Americans in Portland. And that was published in 2013. 
and it's um, part of the Arcadia public publication series. And we also are asked sometimes to submit journal art, articles and um, different uh, uh, blogs to talk about the work that we're doing here in Oregon. One of the um, I, our most recent um, activities have been uh, focused on preservation. We are partnering with the Oregon State Historical um, Historic Preservation Office to uh, de develop a crowdsource project with the first of its kind when the general public throughout the state of Oregon could download information about African American places, objects, events, and then we hired um, historic preservation um, professionals to kind of ver verify the information, and we partnered with the state of Chippewa, who was the uh, service provider for the um, the computer system. We also um, have history tours. We had two so far where we travel from um, Portland to Brownsville to Corvallis to Helvelsia, where there are evidence of African-American historic sites. Um, the picture here is a black pioneer home um, of Eliza and Hannah, a mother and daughter who lived in Corvallis, and this home was built for them in 1865. And uh, the, it was built in two stages. The smaller end was built in 1865, and the pitch um, building was built in 1875. And we also um, have special um, projects that come our way, and one was a beaver board restoration, and Gwen Carr would, uh, worked with the uh, uh, state of Oregon to repair um, a beaver board that was, that was um, uh, torn down during a storm, and it was an opportunity for us to kind of re uh, help them um, uh, name an unknown sailor who was the first African American to uh, to step to uh, be a document in Oregon, and his name was um, Marcus Lopez, and he came here on um, in 1788. Unfortunately, he got into an altercation with Native Americans, and he was killed in Tillamook. But the sign, the original sign, never named him. But through the work with uh, Gwen Carr and the uh, Heritage uh, Commission, we were able to um, restore the building and have his name recognized. Um, York was the first documented African American to um, to uh, enter a, what would become Portland, Oregon. He was part of the Lewis and Clark <coughs> Discovery Corp. And this is a uh, a statue, a sculpture at Lewis and Clark College, and there are several um, uh, statues of him throughout the Portland area, and there's also a street named after York in Northwest Portland. When um, African Americans arrived um, across the Oregon Trail, many came with their former slave owners, um, and many um, were uh, families or, or, or servants of Oregon, uh, members of the Oregon Trail. And they didn't realize when they came that there were several laws that prohibited the, um, from staying in Oregon. And in 1844, during the Oregon Territorial Legislation, they created a, um, a language that prevented slavery, but they also prevented African Americans from staying. So if you were 18 years or older, you had to leave within two years. And eight, in September 1849, they added another exclusion law um, that forbid blacks from settling in the new declared territory. And um, those who were already here were able to stay, but any new blacks or mulattoes would, had to leave the area. Um, and many of the immigrants that came across the Oregon Trail were not uh, big fans of slavery because it was really like a big business for wealthy landowners. And so they didn't want to bring that economic system to Oregon. And they also didn't want to um, have the burden of, of free slaves at the, um, at the time. So throughout the years, um, 
uh, they kind of adjusted and modified these exclusion laws. In 1844, there was even a last law that was attached to one where you would receive um, several lashes from with a whip if he was caught in Oregon Territory. But that was removed, and um, eventually it took several sessions before that um, language was removed from my Constitution. And um, or, um, and backing up in 1859, when Oregon became a state, it, it was the only state that was admitted with a constitution that included exclusion laws, and those laws were repealed in 1926. George Washington um, was an African American who came across the Oregon Trail in 1850. He did not know that they that he would be greeted with these exclusion laws. But he um, set, out, set out west on March 15, 1850, and he arrived in Oregon City on August 31st, 1850. He rented a house in Milwaukee um, upon arrival. Um, he sold several of his cattle and, and other items, and he um, found a place um, to rent. He became neighbors of Lot, Lot Wickham, the founder of the city of Milwaukee, and he also was neighbors of Henderson Llewellyn, uh, a Quaker abolitionist and an underground conductor in Salem, Iowa. And he is also the kind of the Johnny Appleseed of the West. He brought several shoplines, and um, and that he um, was the one who kind of created the apples, different types of apples throughout the West. Um, <laughs> Also, um, he eventually um, settled in Washington Territory um, and in 1852, and he became the founder of Centralia, Washington in 1875. He didn't stay very long in Milwaukee. Uh, I think he might have stayed uh, three months because he became ill, and he ended up having to go to what became Fort Vancouver for um, health care. Um, that was the only place that would provide medical assistance to an African American. And he stayed there quite a bit. And his, he came across the Oregon Trail with his foster parents, um, Anna and James Cochran. And they eventually um, settled near Vancouver so they could be close to him while he was ill. And he stayed in Vancouver for a little while. But eventually um, he, uh, a doctor did save his life and his and um, he left Vancouver, was in Astoria for a while, and then he settled his foster parents in Cowlitz, um, Oregon, and he moved on to Centralia, and mainly because he wasn't allowed to stay in, the, in, the, in Oregon Territory as an African American. This is the Oregon Trail that he took, um, beginning starting from Lancaster, and ending up at the Oregon City. It was uh, 117 days of hard travel. Um, and this is a quote by him. He said, it, it was 117 days of hard travel that brought us to Oregon. And he documented his trip. Um, he had a, a journal where he documented confrontations with Native Americans. It's a very uh, interesting um, read and you learn a lot about the life of those who traveled across the Oregon Trail. Well, sometime later, <laughs> and this is <laughs> one of my favorite couples, um, established or bought the Milwaukee Pastry Kitchen. I was established in 1940s in downtown Milwaukee on Main Street, and um, the original owner had became ill, and the building sat vacant for a while before they bought the property. And one of the owners was a Swedish immigrant um, who uh, um, had owned owned a building, owned a bakery at one time. Um, Dorothy and um, um, Hodes. Uh, purchased the building um, in 1977. They became the first black-owned and operated bakery in Oregon, um, funded by a, a loan by the Small Business Association, which was operated as part of the Model Cities program, um, which was um, 
developed to help African Americans um, receive financing for entrepreneurs programs and projects. Um, the bakery slogan was, put a little soul in your roll, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> and, um, and we're so happy to partner with the Milwaukee Historical Society in helping the, the historical site become recognized as a, as a historic landmark in Milwaukee. And as Greg mentioned, we are celebrating our 25th anniversary um, on March 2nd. We, I hope you can attend. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Justice Nelson, the first African-American woman, um, Justice will be our um, keynote speaker, and we'll be honoring um, several pioneers for their work, and we will also have uh, a dancing and great food. <laughs> Um, thank you so much, and I I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thanks. Very interesting. <clears throat> Do you have any questions or? Mm -hmm. All right. I have a proclamation. Whereas in February we recognize and acknowledge the struggles of Black Americans for racial justice that stirred the very conscience of our nation, and helped guide the shape of her character. And whereas black Americans for generations have courageously led the pursuit of justice and equity and equality from Harriet Tubman to Martin Luther King Jr. and beyond. As our nation struggles to overcome past and present failings that result in persistent inequality, such leaders are crucial to guide us to the principle that all people are created equal. And whereas black Americans have made significant contributions to our nation's economic, educational, political, artistic, literary, scientific, and technological advancements, despite historical and current injustices. And whereas in Milwaukee, we celebrate the contributions of black Americans who have been active in our community, including entrepreneurial boxing promoter, George Moore, and the Milwaukee Pastry Kitchen proprietors, Hurtis and Dorothy Hadley. And whereas recent incidents have given rise to a greater awareness of the continued discrimination and even violence that black Americans face daily and the importance of a greater national dialogue to promote understanding and break down barriers. And whereas as individuals, we must learn about more about the history of black Americans generally and in Oregon in particular and work to build a Milwaukee where every person has equal access to education and employment opportunities and housing. Now, therefore, I, Mark Gamba, mayor of the city of Milwaukee and municipal corporation in the county of Clackamas in the state of Oregon, and with the full support and sponsorship of the Milwaukee Historical Society and the Oregon Black Pioneers, do hereby proclaim February, 9, February 2019 to be Black History Month in Milwaukee and do recommend its observance with appropriate programs and activities. May we get a picture, Mayor? Sure. With uh, you and the council and the Hadleys and... Absolutely. Oh, I just I just Yes. 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 Lots of money to work. Come on.